What I want to share with you is that the relationship that we have with the Rebbe is a very, very, very personal thing. Rabbi Yisrael is younger than I am. Rabbi Kanaka is younger than I am. Not much younger, but younger. Actually, younger. <laughs> Not much younger, That's but younger. Young. <laughs> yeah, it's always good to be younger. Um, until a certain age, it's good to be older, and then all of a sudden, it's better to be younger. And it stays that way ad infinitum forever. Um, but we're more or less the same generation. I remember the Rebbe. He remembers the Rebbe. You saw films of people coming to see the Rebbe. Rishi Deitch, that's my cousin up there who talked about getting a lolly, a red lolly from the Rebbe in his office. I never knew about the lollipops. I'm going to reach out to I never knew the Rebbe gave kids candy. Um, but she describes going into the Rebbe's room, meeting the Rebbe in private. I'm younger than her. I did not have that experience. I don't remember really going into the Rebbe's room and the Rebbe giving me a candy and being nice to me and paying attention to me and that I was important to him. But what she said at the end, somehow this Rebbe, as much as he loved us and he paid attention to us, there was a certain expectation. And you didn't want to disappoint him. What I want to share with you as the hello of this Fabrengen, first for me, okay, and then I'm going to try and project it outward. The relationship that we had with the Rebbe was very, very personal. The Rebbe was a big Rebbe, you know. When my father was a kid, when his father was a kid, my father and his father sat in the same bench in yeshiva. When the whole yeshiva could fit three times in this room. There were more people in this room than the whole yeshiva in the 1950s. But they, would, they had personal relationships with the Rebbe. They would talk to the Rebbe, they would consult with the Rebbe. The Rebbe was very involved in their lives. When we were growing up, the Rebbe was a big Rebbe with many, many Hasidim and, and a, an incredibly overarching influence. The Rebbe wasn't only a Rebbe of Lubavitchers. The Rebbe is the Rebbe. He's everybody's Rebbe in one way or another. So I didn't have the same opportunities as the generation before us had to talk to the Rebbe. But I, I hope I can share with you how pers my relationship with the Rebbe, Rabbi Kanaka's relationship with the Rebbe, was very personal. It really was a, pr was a private, personal relationship between the Rebbe and me. It's, it's hard to explain. How can you have a relationship with a man? Every time he enters into the room, there's another 2,000 people with you. And, and the short answer to the question, the Rebbe was not an ordinary man by any stretch of the imagination. He was not ordinary because he had an unbelievable brain. He could hold a, a virtual infinity of information. He never forgot anything or anybody, not a name, not a face, not a handwriting. And he knew us from our correspondence. But there's another component. The Rebbe is, a tz that's what it means, a tzaddik, a holy person on this level, is different than the rest of us, not just because he's smarter and because he's more righteous and because more pious, but because he is a, he's an ashama person. He's a soul person. He's in touch with his own soul. And because he's in touch with his own soul, there's some kind of a, I don't know how the souls work. I don't understand them very well myself. But we all felt that his neshama, his soul is in a very real way connected to our soul. And uh, this is what I want to share on a practical level. That I would sit at a table. You've seen the pictures, you've seen the films, you can have a fabreng and a gathering and there'd be literally thousands of people collected in 7-7 at a gathering. And there were talks, right? I, I, I don't know if you get the full picture. If, if you walked into 770 to a Fabrengen, which would start at 9.30 at night and go till 12.31 or 2 or 3 or 4, God forgive me, a lot of that Fabrengen <laughs> was quite boring. The Rebbe sat and talked in Yiddish in a monotone. It wasn't always easy to understand what he was saying because he wasn't always telling stories. Um, he had very deep... And the Rebbe in a Fabrengen had an agenda. He would discuss many different things and he would move from topic to topic to topic. And there was, when the Rebbe was done, he shared so much. If you walked out with 25% of what he said, you, you were rich. You know, most people were happy to go away with one idea. And I, I will say this, there was never a fabreng without a pitch. The Rebbe never fabreng without a sale. He was always pitching and his pitch was always, as, as, as my cousin said so concisely, 
there was an expectation. The Rebbe gave all of himself to all of us, and all he wanted back was a, us, that we should give of ourselves. Not just that we should be good, but that we should think about another person. That, that's his whole reality. And that's why Chabad is what Chabad is, because the Rebbe thought about everybody, and he managed to inspire us to think about others besides for ourselves. And that's why people make enormous sacrifices to live in places which are very difficult because the Rebbe needs them there. Um, so the Fabrengans would be talk speeches, you know, every speech is about half an hour, 20 minutes, sometimes a little longer, yeah? But in between the talks, we would sing. And I'm sure you've seen the singing part they show you, the speeches they don't show you, that they give you five minutes, six minutes, but those speeches can go on for an hour too. Um, but we would sing. And during the singing, the Rebbe would scan the room like this here, and if, if you watch the films, the Rebbe is L'chaim Levracha. Very deliberate. L'chaim Levracha. L'chaim Levracha. L'chaim Levracha. And if you pay attention to what's happening, the Rebbe is looking around the room and he's nodding to individual people. Sometimes there'll be a bunch of people one after the next. Sometimes they'll just fly across the room to this guy. L'chaim Levracha. Here's what you don't see in the film. You can never see this in the film. There are hundreds of people. You, you saw the story with this little girl. That is such a it's such an exact Rebbe story. A little girl was up in the women's section and she was making a joke out of this idea of saying L'chaim and the Rebbe sent someone to bring her wine. That is so typical. It's so exactly who the Rebbe is. What you don't understand is this. I'm holding my cup. There's thousands of people in the room. And we're, we're stacked. You know, it's not like you're sitting right here. There's layers. We're one on top of each other. When the Rebbe made eye contact with you, and you were literally 30, 40, 50 feet from him. You had no doubt, none, that he looked straight at you. Because when the Rebbe's eyes touch, touched yours, it was looking at the sun. I had this experience many times. This is, for, I, this is personal. I'm not telling stories. This is my experience. This is the Rebbe I knew. I didn't have an opportunity to talk to the Rebbe. I had an opportunity to write to the Rebbe, and I wish I would have written more, honestly. But I did experience the Rebbe's eyes many, many times. And he was looking around the room, and he would look at you, and it wasn't very long. It took a second or half a zap. And he went, L'chaim Levrach. I cannot tell you how many times the Rebbe would look at my direction, shake to the guy to the right, shake to the guy to the left, shake to the guy on bottom, shake to the guy on bottom. And he didn't look at me. Because when the Rebbe looked at you, there was no doubt. There was just no doubt. If you weren't sure he looked at you, then you were sure he didn't. Because his eyes were a, f a laser, they were a force. And in a split second, he'd look you straight in the eye. Chaim Levrach, and he'd move to the next person. A whole conversation happened, an entire conversation. The conversation, it had so many messages. The conversation was love. The conversation was, I'm never going to give up on you. But depending on where you were in your own spiritual growth, the conversation could say, that's good, keep doing what you're doing, or you're not doing enough, or I'm embarrassed to say, I'm disappointed. In a split second, there was a whole communication. Now imagine that I'm one person. There's a room full of people. And when you watch the Rebbe, scan the crowd during the singing and you watch how he looks very carefully from person to person he turns it back and forth appreciate that this wasn't this wasn't casual there was absolutely nothing formal about this this was intimate this is a really really holy man interacting with really really regular people that's what it was and he raised us this way. That's my generation. That's Rabbi Kanakov's generation. He's a little younger than I am, but I, I, I would imagine you have such experiences. For me, this is so acute. I had this experience many, many times. When I was good, he looked at me differently. When I, I remember once I was engaged to be married. I was never holier in my life than I was a chassan. I came over to the Rebbe to get a little wine. And when I walked away, he followed me with his eyes until I left. And my friend said, you know, the, the Rebbe followed you. Said, he said, I know that he followed me, and I also know why. The Rebbe, with his eyes, raised a whole generation. And the result of this is 
that the Rebbe was not um, like an entertainer or like a politician who sits up on a stage and people are excited about him because he has a lot of power, a lot of influence, or a lot of skill. There was something very personal about every Chassid's relationship with the Rebbe. I, I'm sharing this with you because I think it's very important that I get this out. And the result of this, Rabbi Yisai, ladies and gentlemen, if I may say so, Gimel Tammuz, which was yesterday, the Rebbe's, the anniversary of the Rebbe's passing, it's very hard for us to say that word. So we, we dance around it, we say Gimel Tammuz, I, uh, assuming that you know what that date means. Because the Rebbe hasn't passed. For us, for Hasidim, this is very personal. It's very personal. I spoke Thursday night at another occasion, and I said to the people who I was talking to, if you would ask any Chabad rabbi, any Chabad rabbi, any, any place in the world, if you could have one day off, one day for yourself, one day that you wouldn't share with your community, that yours, which day would it be that we would all choose Gimel Thomas? Because we're Hasidim. We're Hasidim, have a Rebbe. This is, this is not just uh, a CEO of a company, or of a corporation that's quite successful, who's got franchisees all over the world. This is religion. This is very spiritual. And our relationship with the Rebbe is very, very personal. And when Chabad emissaries travel around, and they do the Rebbe's work, and we know what the Rebbe's work is. The Rebbe's work is, you meet a Jew, you do a mitzvah. You meet a Jew, you do a mitzvah. You, you meet a Jew and you get them to do something Jewish in the belief that there's no real way to change another human being. Philosophy and speeches and even chicken soup. A mitzvah. You meet a Jew and you make them do an act. That's a real, it's a statement of recognition that there is a God and that we are, have a relationship with him and we serve him. It's, li it's life changing. And this is the Rebbe's attitude, the Rebbe's philosophy, the Rebbe's approach. One of the things that Chabad rabbis and rabbis do is they try to give their communicate the, the communities, the Rebbe. They want to communicate to you the personal relationship that they have with this holy man, not because they value him, but because we really believe that it's conceivable for a person to have never met the Rebbe and to develop a personal relationship with him. And I think that this is a very serious part of this occasion. Uh, Gimel Thomas, right? Again, I, I, uh, <laughs> it's hard for me to say. Gimel Thomas is the yard test, the anniversary of the passing of the Rebbe. The Rebbe has not passed, believe me. But the, biologically, physically, that's the reality. Gimel Thomas is a day that each one of us thinks, recollects, reminisces, goes back into our memories about our personal moments with the Rebbe and we never forget them. They're very, very important to us. They're very precious to us. They're very holy to us. And in such a real way, who we are is defined by those eyes. And the moments that the Rebbe looked into our eyes. And we feel that it's a it's not only a holy duty, it's a it's an it's a it's a gift. It's a bracha. It's a a great kindness that we could do to people that we meet to try and give them a relationship with this tzaddik who physically they cannot meet. Because a connection to a tzaddik, ladies and gentlemen, a connection to a tzaddik is very different than a connection to a scholar or to an intellectual or to any other kind of personality whose greatness is defined in a measurable way. The Rebbe is an incredibly accomplished man. He was a scholar of the highest order. He, his life is so successful. He's such an incredibly successful person. But after all, the Rebbe is a holy person who is deeply and spiritually connected to God. And he's a gift from God to the Jewish people. And that gift is that because of him, we have the opportunity that we also can be spiritually connected to God. So I want to say l'chaim. I want to say l'chaim to all of us. I, I, this is what I've been saying all weekend. This is my this is my first my opening salvo. I want I, I prepared a different speech, but apparently I wasn't supposed to give it. So here I go. I want to say this to all of you, rabbis. I'm meeting you for the first time, and if you like me, you'll visit me in Sachasid. If you won't, you'll turn me off. I have a student. <laughs> he says, Rabbi, I get to turn you off ten times a day. <laughs> I'm happy to make you happy. Um, 
But okay, I, I want to say this. I, I give all of us a bracha. There are people in this room, someone told me that they've met that Rebbe. I give all of us a bracha that when you hear Chabadikis talk about the Rebbe, it should not be their Rebbe that they're talking about. In some way, shape, or form, it should be my Rebbe. Whether you actually physically travel to New York and visit the Rebbe's resting place and leave a note and you'll see, you visit that, you visit that place, you'll feel holiness. You, even the most skeptical amongst you, that, that little stone mausoleum, there, there's, there's very overt holiness. To me, when I go to the oil, and I go quite often nowadays, you feel unbelievable peace. That's what I feel above all else. It's incredibly peaceful, even when it's full of people. And I give all of us a bracha that Gimel Tamil should not be the Lubavitcher Rebbe, it's my Rebbe. This is what we. This is one of the greatest things any Chabad rabbi can give to his community, is that they should feel a little bit of how he or she feels about their relationship with the Rebbe, because because it really is what makes us tick. It really makes us tick. It justifies what Chabad people do, and uh, you should have a personal relationship. The Rebbe is a very big Rebbe, with his eyes or whatever thing he's going to use, he'll touch. You'll feel like he's there for you. And as my cousin Rishi Daish said there's going to be an expectation and the expectation is going to be uncomfortable i tell you now <laughs> one of the realities of being a devil could talk for four hours and if i bring him and it was delightful and for 15 minutes he'd lecture us about what we're doing wrong and you walked out the whole four hours like why did he have to do that and the anchor if he didn't do that he wouldn't be that ever you understand the Rebbe is he's not there to entertain you'd entertain he's he's there to push to motivate to inspire so l'chaim to all of us and I really mean this. We should all, each person should be zayche to feel that the Rebbe is not a has-been and the Rebbe is not somebody else's. The Rebbe is mine. And when you have that personal relationship with the Rebbe, you'll be a chassid. You'll be a chassid. That's what it means. A chassid has a Rebbe.